Hello all, welcome to the Flash Loans talk. My name is Andrew Joseph. I am a blockchain security engineer at Coinbase. I have been a speaker and a trainer in the past Black Hat, DEF CON, Hack in the Box, and NullCon conferences. I'm interested in distributed systems, obviously blockchains, and uh, machine learning and memes. Let's go over the agenda for today's talk. We'll initially go over what are crypto loans, like regular loans, but in DeFi. We'll take a loan using Aave, which is one of the flash loan providers. We'll talk about what flash loans are. We'll use a tool called Brownie to interact with smart contracts. It is a Python based tool and it's really easy to use. We'll have a flash loan demo and we'll also do an arbitrage. Towards the end of the talk, I'll share some resources where you can learn more. What is over collateralization? It sounds like a really complex word, right? But let's think of it as from, a, from the perspective of a regular loan. When you go to the bank to get a loan, you would put up your house as collateral if you're taking a house loan, right? that is. And that assures the bank that you will make a repayment because if you don't, they can take your house. And the loan value will always be lower than the market value of your house. But you would wonder, right, how, how can the bank hedge against changes in the market price, right? Things can go up and down. So they would have a certain amount of safety. That is the margin when they approve a loan. And how do they make money? You obviously pay an interest on your loan. And crypto loans are mostly over collateralized, but flash loans are an exception. So let's look at how we can take a loan from Aave using your browser and a wallet. To do that, you need some collateral, and we can use test ether that you can get from a faucet as noted here in the slides. And then we can use the test, testnet Aave, which is the loan provider to, te to test our understanding, right? So let's get into it. All right. So here we are in the Aave testnet and I'm connecting my browser MetaMask which is a wallet. And that is what we see here. That is the collateral that I have, test collateral that I have. And this is the dashboard where I can see what have I borrowed, what is my collateral. And to take a loan, you have to first of all provide some collateral because it's an over collateralized loan, right? And you can see that I have some deposits. And now we can add more collateral if we wish to. If we add collateral, we'll earn an AP, APY on your collateral, which is interest. And here I'm adding some collateral, some more collateral to my position in Aave. And when I click on the deposit, the app asks me to sign a transaction. And I, I will do that with my wallet. In this case, it is MetaMask, which has my private keys. If you click on that particular transaction, you can see either scan where you can explore the details of the transaction. And as you can see, the transaction is successful. And now, we see that our current balance 
has increased. Now let's borrow some USDC. And as you can see, when I drag the slider across, I can borrow more, but it's a lot more risk. So what, what do I mean by a lot more risk, right? If, if, you, if you have a very high risk loan, you are very likely to get your position liquidated because for the port protocol to stay solvent, they have to make sure that your loan never goes under. And to do that, the protocol will, will sell under collateralized loans at a discount to the market. And the, and the participants that would liquidate your loans get to buy these collateral at a lower price. So that is how they are incentivized. Now, once we have set up a safe health factor, we would want to select if you want a stable APY or a variable APY. For demo purposes, we'll just go with a variable APY. And this would give us all the details of our loan. We would click borrow, and then we can sign the transaction. we can explore the details of the transaction in either scan. And now when you look at your dashboard, you have USDC. So you effectively took a USDC loan against your collateral, which is ETH. And that's how you would take a loan against your collateral. Now, Let's look at Brownie because we just used a web browser and a browser extension, which is our wallet, to interact with a smart contract. And the web browser displays the front end to the smart contract, which are called dApps. What if we want to directly interact with smart contracts? So Brownie is a Python-based development and testing framework for smart contracts targeting the Ethereum virtual machine. Now, we will take a loan from Aave using Brownie. We will get familiar with the Brownie API, and we'll also configure our Infura, Alchemy, and Etherscan keys. These are just node providers that Brownie can use to interact with the mainnet. Right. So as you can see here, I have my secrets exported and I have started a mainnet fork. What is a mainnet fork? So Brownie creates a local version of the current Ethereum blockchain state that we can interact with without spending real funds. As you can see, this is a fork. And then we work on that particular fork. And we will fork at a particular block. Now we get a contract, a reference to a contract. And this is how you can get a reference to a contract. And that particular contract is the wrapped ETH contract on, on the mainnet. And then we make a deposit. And we can check that we have some wrapped ETH. For DeFi, most dApps prefer wrapped ETH 
because it conforms to ERC20 standards, which makes it easier to work with. And we can use the Web3 provider to make it readable. And as you can see, the contract for the RA lending pool is also in here, which is required so we can take a loan from Aave. Next, we approve, and then we can take a loan, right? So it is important that we approve Aave lending pool uh, so to spend the funds so that this can work. It's just how ERC20s work. And now we can see that we can make a deposit and that that is available in the trans, trans, transaction info, which you can get by calling dot info to the reference of the transaction. And once you deposit, you would have tokens that represents your position in Aave, which is the contract that we are grabbing here. And as you can see, we have some balance. Again, this can be transformed to easily readable numbers using Web3. And now we will be checking what's the amount of ETH that's available to borrow from. And we deposited a certain amount that you can see here. Now, because we are taking an over collateralized loan, we cannot take a loan against all the collateral that we have. So there needs to be a health factor. And we also need the price of the asset, which you can get from a price oracle. So you would get the current price, which is inside that array, and you would calculate the amount of ERC20 that you can borrow with a particular health factor that you agree to. And we can look at what that is. And now we can send a transaction to the RA lending pool, and that should give us that particular loan. So in this case, we are taking a DAI loan, so we would grab the DAI contract from mainnet, and then we can do a balance off on the account, and you will see that you, we actually got a DAI loan against our wrapped Ether. And we can again use Web3 to make it readable, if you want. Uh -huh. So that's how easy it is to take a loan using Brownie, completely scripted. And you can see that we have that, that much amount of die in our account right now. Now, what's the deal about flash loans, right? So it was easy to take a regular loan from Aave, but what are flash loans? Flash loans are the first unsecured loan option in DeFi, which means you don't need to put down any collateral. I mean, that sounds wild, right? Why would someone give you a loan like that? They have been used for arbitrage, flash liquidations, collateral swaps, and flash loans. It it's, looks very attractive. So let's get into it. So how can someone provide no collateral loans? Some of the primitives that is required to provide such a loan is that a transaction on the network can be undone as long as it is reverted before it finishes. And so with a flash loan, the lender has the power to revert everything that happened in that transaction if their requirements are not met which is basically they should get their money back within the same transaction plus some interest. So that is basically 
what no collateral loans are. And to actually make a flash loan, we would have to write some code. And Brownie has some templates which has made it very easier to make to do a flash loan. And we'll be exploring that. So this is the smart contract or the course part of the smart contract that we'll be deploying to our mainnet fork so that we can make a flash loan. As you can see, there are three modes. One is zero, the no debt, which is basically a flash loan. The one and two represents a stable loan and a variable APR loan, which we observed earlier on. So we'll, we'll be setting the mode to zero and we'll be calling the Aave lending pool dot flash loan. And these are self-explanatory. So this is the main function that enables this flash loan. And this is part of the smart contract that you would get when you use that particular Brownie mix. So in this demo, we'll be taking a flash loan from Aave using this Brownie mix template. We'll also get familiar with the flash loan API. And later on, we will try an arbitrage. Right. So let's start a main network. And this is how you would do that. You grab the wrapped ETH contract from the mainnet and get a reference to it. Then you deposit some ether so you can have some wrapped ether to do all your DeFi magic with. So that is essentially what happened here. As you can see, we have some balance, which is expected. Now you can make it readable using the Web3 helpers. As you can see, we have NAND wrapped either. You again get a reference to the Aave lending pool and you can use this lending pool to do your flash loan as well. We earlier used this to get a regular over collateralized loan, but now we are going to deploy the flash loan contract to the mainnet fork, and we will grab a reference to that flash loan contract so we can interact with it later on. As you can see, we have a reference to the flash loan now flash loan contract deployed on the main network. In this case, we need to pay back the loan provider before the end of the flash loan, else the transaction would revert. But so for testing purposes, we will fund the flash loan contract with some test either so that the transaction doesn't fail. And you can see that we called the trans flash loan function and we successfully did a flash loan. And this transaction info basically gives us information about our flash loan. So we wrapped some either, we deposited, we have some interest bearing 
wrapped ETH in Aave and we repaid the flash loan. So it's it's basically we got some collateral, we wrapped it, we took a flash loan, and then we repaid it. So we didn't do anything fancy with this collateral, but we'll be doing that in the upcoming demos. So one of the cool things that we are interested in to learn more are flash loan attacks. And we, we have a lot of these attacks, but we'll go over some of these in this presentation. The one attack that you guys might be interested in is a pump and an arbitrage, which basically means we pump up the price of a token pair on, a, on an automated mark, market maker with leveraged funds. It could be in a margin trade. And as a result, the hacker would purchase these assets at a cheaper price because they basically distorted the price on this particular DAX. The other one, other kind of attack is an Oracle price manipulation attack. And that basically means a DAP which uses some AMM's price feed as an Oracle can be manipulated using flash loans because of the way AMM's work and not every Oracle provided by the AMM's are resistant to flash loans. We can also exploit logical bugs. And we'll, that's a big topic. And that basically means that economic flaws or business logic flaws, which are economic exploits, can be, can be exploited with a, a great amount of capital because of flash loans. Without flash loans, it would require you to have a lot of capital, but flash loans allow everyone to leverage capital and deal with inefficiencies in, in the space. So let's look at in detail about Oracle price manipulation. So here we have a, a flow chart which shows an Oracle price manipulation attack. It starts with the attacker borrowing a certain amount of ETH from a flash loan provider, exchanging that ether for synthetic USD, and later depositing some ether for more SUSD, and then using those acquired SUSD to manipulate the price on a DEX, which allows the attacker to cause a huge slippage and profit from it. So let's just explore how this is done. So initially, there's a flash loan of 7,000. 500 ETH, Ether on BCX. And then the attacker would convert their Ether to SUSD on Uniswap and Kyber. And they would deposit a certain amount of Ether to synthetics to get more SUSD. So at this point, the attacker has a lot of SUSD. So in total, 
about 4,417 Ether is converted to this much amount of SUSD at an average price of 249 SUSD per Ether. The price of Uniswap and Kyber are collectively used as a price oracle on BCX. So that's the trick here. Because of that reason, the adversarial trader takes a loan by collateralizing all the SUSD that he has acquired to borrow certain amount of ETH. And that is at a price of 162 SUSD per ETH on BCX. And given that, we also have some unspent Ether from the flash loan, which is around 3000 Ether. So adding all that up, because we have about 9,882 ETH right now. We can repay the flash loan we took plus the premium and still keep 2,382 ETH as a profit from this flash loan. Th that is essentially what the exploit is. And if you would like to learn more, I would totally recommend reading this research paper that I have the link for in the resources page later on in the presentation. So as you can see, the, there's a lot of arbitrage going on here. What is arbitrage? Arbitrage is the practice of taking advantage of a price difference between two or more markets. A striking combination of matching deals that get capitalized upon the imbalance, the profit being the difference between the market prices at which the unit is traded. In our case, we will be doing an arbitrage between two DEXs, which is Uniswap and SushiSwap. So let's go over our arbitrage strategy. So we would take a flash loan from Aave and we will borrow Ether. We will then call the Uniswap V2 to wrap Ether into wrapped Ether and then exchange it for DAI tokens on Uniswap. Then we'll check the exchange rate of DAI back into Ether on SushiSwap, which is a completely different DEX. Then we will call the SushiSwap router to swap the DAI back into wrapped Ether and then to Ether. If there is a price difference between Uniswap and SushiSwap, then we can arbitrage the difference. We can go either from Uniswap to SushiSwap or we can go from SushiSwap to Uniswap. We then pay back the flash loan, which is the amount that we borrowed initially, plus the premium for the flash loan and keep any difference. So, then testing, we can fund the contract with some test either. So your execution won't revert because this price difference doesn't exist all the time. Intuitively, you can think that in times of high volatility, you could see the price difference between multiple DEXs varying at a greater percentage, right? So you could fork at a particular block 
when this particular DEX is diverged from the market price and then execute the strategy. And that is one way to test it without funding the contract. But for ease of testing, we will pre-fund the contract. You can also take a look at this contract and learn more. The source is linked here. Link here. And this is the one of the important functions in the arbitrage smart contract. So here you can see that we are integrating with the Uniswap router, and then we are approving DAI to be spent, and then we are also trying to swap funds using the SushiSwap router. So essentially, that is the logic of the smart contract. Now let's look at the demo. So as usual, we would start our Brownie console mainnet fork. And right here, you can see that we are importing the smart contract that we just looked at. And we are also deploying this particular smart contract right after that. So to deploy the smart contract, we need some parameters. So let's look at what are the parameters required for the smart contract deployment? So you would need the Aave lending pool, the Uniswap router, and the SushiSwap router. You can see that being highlighted here. So the first one is the Aave lending pool. The second one is the Uniswap router. And the third address is the SushiSwap router. And the last item is just the account in which the funds will be spent. Once we have that deployed, we can actually do the flash loan. And flash loans also take some parameters. But before that, as explained before, for the ease of testing, we can transfer some funds to our flash loan contract so the execution won't revert if there isn't an arbitrage available right now between these token pairs and these DEXs. And if you look at this transaction, we can see that we have provided a bunch of parameters to the flash round contract. So the first parameter is the asset that we want to borrow using the flash loan. And that is Ether. And this is how you would represent Ether. And then we have the amount that you want to flash borrow, right? And this basically represents one Ether. And the next address is the DAI token address on the mainnet. And the next parameter is the amount that we need to trade, which is the amount that we borrowed. And the next item or the next parameter is the amount of tokens that we need to swap back to complete the arbitrage. So like we got, we are like basically doing die right so th that is the amount of die that that we need to like swap back and let's look at the transaction you can see that we that we wrapped ether because as I explained earlier wrapped ether is much easier to deal with within DeFi applications so that is why you would wrap ether first and then 
we have it converted to die like die stable coin on uniswap and then later on we will convert that die back to like wrapped ether as you can see here on sushi swap and then we, we will again convert wrapped ether to like ether and if there was a price difference we would make a profit after paying back the smart contract all right now that we have looked at arbitrage and some of the hacks some of the hacking techniques using flash loans how can we defend against these attacks so some of my observations are it's important to write test cases and security audits can certainly help uncover bugs but it's also very important to simulate various market conditions and fuzzing can help a lot here so for example when your contract integrates with multiple other contracts it is very important that we understand the behavior of the participants and how certain behavior will affect your logic so that is what i mean by simulating various marketing market conditions we should also verify your oracle implementations so if you were to just grab your price feed from some on chain dexs and without any verification of that price feed it is very likely that that price feed can be manipulated due to, by techniques that was explained earlier i would certainly recommend reading the blog post that i have linked down below which goes into much detail about how something like that can be done uniswap has uh, this time weighted price average oracle i hope i said that right which aims to mitigate some of this there is also the audit for that oracle that i have linked down below i again would recommend double checking any custom logic that you have and triple checking when you integrate with other contracts Th these are some of the resources that I have used in this presentation which was very helpful and i would recommend you look at these as well all of these has code that you can try try it out and there is code for doing an arbitrage that we had a demo for earlier in this presentation if you want to try out your own flash loan strategies we have a brownie mix for that if you would like to do other strategies in defi there is links to that as well so uh, uh, i hope this was useful and uh, thank you thank you for listening